Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Green. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. We are so elated to have you with us tonight. We are coming from 2 Timothy chapter 1. I hope everybody read 2 Timothy chapter 1 in advance. When you do that, you're going to get a lot more out of the lesson. Uh, just to kind of summarize 2 Timothy, uh, the Apostle Paul begins this letter very typically the way he does many of his other uh, epistles. Um, he writes a letter to his beloved son, uh, and he, he graces it with prayer and mercy, and he's thankful to God for, for Timothy and, uh, and the memories he has of Timothy and how he prays for him night and day. And he begins the letter really in earnest in around the sixth verse, and he he has a, a series of exhortations uh, encouraging him. Uh, he wants him to uh, to really be mindful of everything he taught him. Now that first letter to Timothy was written a, a couple of years earlier, but this was actually Paul's last communication. Second Timothy was right before he was killed, so he and he knew he was on death row. The first one he knew he was going to be getting out of jail, uh, but now he's not getting out. He knows he's not getting out, and and uh, he's so this is kind of his swan song, and and he you know if you if you could imagine a father on a deathbed giving instructions to his children before he die, and that's the mindset that you need to have when you look at Second Timothy. So Second Timothy. It, it, it works out a little bit different from the tone is completely different from what we got in in first timothy and you can see that in his writings uh, we're going to start out with a word of prayer then we're going to proceed father in heaven we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again and to share the unadulterated word of god so we ask you for clarity of mind and thought that we may convey the truth of your word that we may apprehend the depth of the knowledge and the compassion and passion that Paul had for his son in the ministry. So we just thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a great way to start this epistle. And that's exactly what he did. And he's letting you know that Paul, he's an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, not man. You need to get that. It, it, this is God's idea to turn Paul into an apostle, not man. See, if it was left up to man, well, truth is, uh, Paul would tell you himself that he was the least qualified, but he's one that God qualified he was uh, he was he counted himself a chief among sinners yet God qualified him. so that's what he is he said by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus he's an apostle because Jesus Christ died on the cross for his sin and made him an apostle okay and he, he dearly beloved my son my to, to Timothy his son in the ministry it's not his biological son uh, we learned in uh, the book of Acts that um, uh, uh, Timothy his mother was uh, a Jewess and his father was a Greek all uh, right but his, his it's um, but Paul considers him he treats him like a son because he led him to Christ he uh, worked with him he, uh, he, he groomed him in ministry he trained him everywhere Paul went, Timothy went, and, and Paul was, uh, he was his constant companion for a long time when Paul, when Paul first got started. And, and uh, Paul is, is, is just so grateful for him that he had been there with him all these years. Now, verses 3 through 5, basically we see words of thanksgiving. Look what he says. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. I, 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 I thank God for you, uh, uh, Timothy, and I've been praying for you night and day. Here he is, Paul is locked up in prison now, getting ready to be beheaded. But his thoughts are with Timothy. 
not on himself. Usually, a lot of time when folk locked up in jail, they they having pity parties. I don't see mm-hmm. when I read this letter. I don't see a man having a pity mm-hmm. party. I see a man genuinely concerned about uh, a someone that he cares for greatly and wanting them to be successful in their endeavors in the ministry going forward after he's gone. He says, I'm greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Uh, he he wants to see him. It's not going to happen, but he, he wants to see him. Uh, 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 shortly after, well, actually, he's hoping to see him. Uh, and, and I think Timothy does visit him one more time before Paul is executed. Uh, Paul was executed at the hand of Nero. Y'all remember Nero? He's the one that burned Rome down, and he played a fiddle while um, uh, uh, while the city was burning, and he blamed it on the Jews. He burned it down, and he blamed it on the Jews. See, he wanted to rebuild Rome anyway, and uh, there's a whole bunch of old slums that he wanted to get rid of, but he couldn't get, in order to rebuild the the, uh, the, uh, uh, the city, he had to get people out of there so he can uh, 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 rebuild it. So he burned it down and he blamed it on the Jews and the people were mad at the Jews because Nero, Nero lied and said that they were the ones who, who, burnt, who, who started the fire. And he know good and well he was the one who did it. Verse, five, verse 3. I thank God whom I serve through my forefathers with pure conscience. My conscience is clear. I have nothing to hide. Okay? I greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is that is in thee, which dealt first in thy grandmother Lois and to thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in thee also. See, Paul watched Timothy grow up as a child. Uh, he was ministering to Paul's, uh, to Timothy's grandmother and mother. And, and you know, just like uh, we have little children running around, they, you know, um, I don't know where old Kendallin went, but uh, uh, you know, when children grow up in a household and they and the word of God is taught, them, some of the children get a hold of it and some of them don't. Uh, you can tell the child that's going to end up uh, that may end up in service to uh, uh, Almighty God, just like you can tell the child that may end up in the penitentiary. We don't say this, but you can almost you can spot them. You can spot the ones that are going to end up in the service of God. Now, we have no idea what a child is going to be, but Paul saw Timothy grow up, and he was, he he was uh, he, he watched him grow up in the faith, and he's proud of the fact that he was, he was able to witness that. And, and, and he, he just like he knew that uh, 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 Timothy's grandmother and mother were saved, he's a certain of that of, of, um, of Timothy also. That's what he's saying here. But look what he say here in verse 8. He says, verse 6, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift, the gift of God which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. Paul was the one who laid hands on him. Uh, y'all remember the story of where Elijah uh, gave his mantle to Elijah and he laid his hands on it and gave him the mantle and the power of Elijah was transferred to Elisha. Well, guess what? The power of Timothy, the anointing of Timothy, when he laid hands on him, his anointing went to Timothy. Now, Timothy had his own anointing, but when, when, when uh, uh, Paul laid hands on him, uh, his anointing was magnified by, those, by the laying on of hands. It was signified. Paul laid hands on him and he uh, uh, anointed him. And the, the anointing remained by the power of the Holy Ghost. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When Paul laid hands on him and the, 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 the power of God was transferred by the laying on of hands. And, and, and he, Paul says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. The spirit of power, not the spirit of fear. And why would he need that power? Look what he says here in verse 8. 
Be thou, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Why would uh, Paul tell Timothy that? Well, Paul was in prison getting ready to be beheaded for the sake of the gospel. Somebody writing you from jail telling you that you know they're about to be executed and you're doing the same thing they're doing, guess what can happen to you? Exactly. So Paul was telling him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And don't be don't be ashamed of the gospel. You know, when you know you might get in trouble for preaching the gospel, you might keep your mouth shut. Uh, you get a chance to witness somebody, and uh, you wonder about who listening, because uh, there might be some enemies of the cross there, and you be quiet. But you got the opportunity to share the gospel with somebody. Paul said, "Don't be ashamed of the gospel." Here's the same word that Paul wrote. Remember in Romans. Um, uh, 1 and 16, be not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. You cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're going to be a minister of Jesus Christ, you cannot be ashamed of the gospel because that's the only thing we are authorized to preach. Oh, it's a whole, whole lot of folk like to preach a whole lot of stuff and, uh, uh, you know, does it sound good and, uh, and it tickles people's ears but it's not the stuff that get folks saved. It's not the, the stuff that change people's lives. Not in, in a meaningful way that's going to last. And, 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 and he, he says here, you know, God hadn't given us the spirit of fear. So if there's some fear, it's not, God didn't give you that. See, anything that's not of faith is sin. And what's the opposite of faith? Fear. He said, but of a, but a, a, a power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not a therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Uh, don't disown me because I'm locked up. You know, uh, you know, sometimes the bad things happen, you don't want to mention it. Because there is some, there's some, uh, uh, some theologians out there that they, uh, they associate negative actions against you with your spirituality. They think if you go and see that was the mindset of the Jews anyway. If something bad is happening to you it's because you're in sin. Which is not the case. Uh, uh, Jesus preached that against the um, uh, against the, the Pharisees a long time ago. That was a mindset in all the, in the Jews. Now, and and it, that had permeated into the pagan Gentile world. So if something, if you're in trouble, uh, you must be a sinner. That's the way they thought. And, and, and but uh, Paul, what Paul is saying is, don't be ashamed, but be a partaker in the affliction. Don't be ashamed of the affliction. Be willing to accept it. He says, be thou therefore not ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou a partaker in the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Uh, there's going to come a time when uh, you may have to deal with some stuff because of the gospel. He says, he is a partaker, be a partaker of the gospel, be a partaker of the affliction. The, the, the reality is uh, uh, Paul he speaks of himself as a prisoner of Christ, uh, although in reality he was in a Roman prison. He was in a Roman prison. But when he, he, when he, he spoke of himself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ and, and it was uh, uh, to be, he was proud to be a partaker of the afflictions. So if Timothy had to be had to suffer afflictions for uh, uh, the sake of the gospel, be proud to do it. That's what he said here. Yeah. Verse nine: Who has saved us? and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, 
but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. This was God's plan all the while. This was God's plan all the while, before the world began. He, he knew hard times would come to folk who preach the gospel. But you, you're not, newsflash, we're not going to ever win the world over to the gospel. It's not going to happen. In fact, the world is going to get worse and worse. But we, even knowing that, we still got to keep preaching. In fact, it's more difficult for to get people to accept the gospel message now than it ever been because there's so many other things catching people's attention. Uh, uh, relative moral relativism. Uh, uh, our society has an inability to call out sin. We don't want to offend nobody. Uh, we get um, uh, folk get mad at you if you call out their sin. Our society tells us that we're supposed to be proud of our sin. We are defined by our sin nature. We shouldn't take our identity from God. We need to take we uh, accept your sin nature for what it is and embrace it. You need to learn how to love you. That's what our our uh, uh, society teaches. So anybody that holds a, a strong view, a strong Christian worldview, uh, you're going to become a target. You subject to get your job uh, taken out from under you. You subject to lose your life. Uh, you're going to get real unpopular. The more righteous stand you take, the more unpopular you will get in our society. And it's just that simple. So Paul, he was not ashamed of the gospel. He said that in Romans 1, Romans 1 and 6. And he urges Timothy not to be ashamed of it either. He said he's committed. And, and Paul's salvation and apostleship were a, a sacred trust that God gave him. And he wanted, uh, 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 he wanted to make sure that Timothy thought the same way. You have to view it as a sacred trust. God didn't save you out of a vacuum. He got a purpose for you. And he wants you to do the job. Now, these verses 13 through 18, basically what we see is a, a just exhortation to steadfastness and loyalty. Look at verse 13. He says, Now, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. <coughs> that good thing which was committed unto thee by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. He said, keep that thing. Hold fast to it. You, you, you see, hold fast to what God, to the gift that God has given you. He told him to stir up the gift, use the gift, and hold fast to the knowledge because stuff going to happen and make you, that will tempt you to want to drop the ball. Or that will tempt you to want to to, uh, 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 to lay the bloodstained banner down. But don't do it. That's what Paul is saying. Hold fast. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. He said, hold fast to form of sound words. Now, let me tell you, he goes, now, this is the society in which we live. You preach Jesus Christ. You preach a living righteous. You start calling out sin. Folks don't want to hear that. Folk go through the proper side money coming to it. You know, if you, if you want your following in our society, in the world of Christendom, you start prophesying, the Lord has spoke to me and they told me that you're going to receive some money. Uh, they love to prophesy that around um, February. But everybody's going to get them income tax. They're going to get some income That ain't prophesying. That's just reality. I'm, I'm, I'm prophesying that somebody's going to bless you with some money. Man, please. Uh, uh, if, you, if you start preaching that, folks can invite you to their church because the offering is going to be high. Folks start giving in order to get. And the offerings get high. 
And, and the pastor of that church, he invited you to come back because every when you come, the the, off, the money be coming in. Uh, you start to you call it out sin. Uh, are you you uh, uh, admonishing folk for the, the need, the necessity to live righteously? Folk don't want to hear that because folk like doing what they do. So he is saying here, hold fast to sound words. The temptation is to preach that dribble that folk want to hear, but don't do it. He said, the good thing which was committed unto you by the Holy Ghost that dwells in us, that's what you need to keep. Verse 15, this thou knowest, that they which are in Asia have been turned away from me, of whom are Phagellus and Homogenes. Uh, he, he, he did. Now, it's some folk that, it's some folk left him. When, when, when Paul got in trouble, when Paul got arrested, there were some more people who were with him, but they ran. And uh, Paul, what Paul is doing here, he calling them out. He throwing them under the bus. He says, this thou know, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. They abandoned them. They act like they didn't know it. And he called out for jealous and homogenes. But then in verse 16, one who did not, and he called him out too. He says, The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesephorus, for he often refreshed me, and he was not ashamed of my chain. So when Paul got arrested on the surface, still went, still went to visit him. These uh, other folk, they 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 had cut and ran. On the surface, still went to visit him. Still uh, brought in um, what he relief was a blessing to him. Didn't act like he didn't know him no more because he locked up. He called him out. He called out the good. He called out the bad. And, and the. In fact, let me turn to it to, to the end. Let me just run to uh, uh, 4, I think it's verse 30, I believe. Right at the end, when he's given the final greetings. Uh, 4, verse 19, he says, Salute Precia and Aquila and the household of Onesephorus, same person. At the end of the letter, he calls him out again and he commends him because he was there at the end. When others had ran out on him, he didn't because he was not ashamed of his chains. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. And the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the day of the Lord in that day. And how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus Thou knowest very, y'all. Thou knowest very well, and, and uh, you know uh, Timothy was just reminding uh, uh, Paul was just reminding Timothy how um, uh, faithful Onesiphorus was. So when uh, uh, Timothy get in contact with Onesiphorus, he know how to respond to it. See, when you know somebody who done bless your mentor, even when you weren't there. When you see him, you thank him. Because Paul is going to be dead in a very short while. And that's how this particular, that's how this chapter ends. Uh, it's, it's the Lord granted to him that he may find mercy in that day. Because all of us going to face that day. All of us going to face that day. What day is he talking about? The day uh, at the end of our lives. When Jesus Christ come back, if he tarries, all of us are going to leave him. And all of us are going to face that day. And the, the thing is, may the Lord grant you mercy for that day. And, and, and give you the strength to hold fast in, uh, while you endure the affliction. Now, as we go through this, Paul is going to use some 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 language. We're going to continue to encourage uh, 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 Timothy about how to endure affliction. He uses uh, the language. He uses the language of a soldier. He uses language of a of an athlete. Same concept. 
So that some, some work is hard and it requires some effort. And that's what Paul is talking about right now. That's what Paul is trying to encourage Timothy. He's saying, Timothy, it's not going to be easy to hang in there. That's the basic, that's the gist. That's the gist of the message. So, what he would do, so you know, he, 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 he wrote the letter to his beloved son and he reminded Paul, Paul reminded Timothy to hang in there. Stir up the gifts that's in you. Use the gift. Use what God gave you. And I know it's in you. I've seen it since you were a child and I laid hands on you myself, so I know it's in you. Keep doing the work. Hold fast. Don't give up. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again. We pray right now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus that those that are listening to the sound of my voice would be encouraged. Uh, allow the word of God to dwell in you richly, that it will come forth flowing like, like rivers of living water, that God can use you in a profound way to, to encourage others and to uh, encourage and, and enable others to uh, overcome the, the grips of, that sin has ravaged in their lives. So God, use us in, a, in, a, in a, a special, profound way in this generation. Forgive us of our sin that our prayers are not hindered. And allow, the, allow us to, to be diligent in our endeavors. Give us boldness to speak in times when it may not be popular. Give us the words to speak at the right moment that may make a difference in someone's life. Allow your word to flow. Allow your spirit to dominate. Allow your spirit to, to lead us and guide us into all truth. That we can glorify you in this world, in this life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we see you Sunday at 1025, 1015. Uh, we're we're going to be, I want you to read. Uh, chapter 2 next week and if, as I always said if anybody wants my notes just send me a message and I'll send you the notes I'll download all of them uh, but don't just get them and let them fill in your inbox read them, study them, use them as a study guide to help you those of you that may be that God, you think God might be uh, uh, want to train you to be a, uh, a Bible school teacher uh, more effective in your own witness in your own uh, life uh, contact me I'll give you you know, uh, God give it to me and I give it to you. I mean, and then everything we've done is on Facebook and we're putting everything on uh, YouTube. So um, if you want to watch it again, do it, share the message. And if anybody wants to give to the ministry, you may do something. The, uh, the dollar sign cash out, cash out, what is it? Uh, a dollar sign green W. Any gift of any amount, don't be bashful. God bless you. If you're blessed by what you've learned and what you've been learning over the, the years and months and days and weeks, uh, show Pastor you appreciate him with the love of him. Uh, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy, the only true and wise God, may glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever, and all of God's people say amen. We'll see y'all next time.